Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel here. And thank you so much for stopping by. This is an educational channel, as you know, for the WSET courses. This one specifically for the diploma. So we are here looking at the riveting world of finishing and packaging. Not the most romantic, but of course, important nonetheless. This is going to be a two-part series on the packaging operation. So we'll go through on this section the pre-filling and analysis and looking at technical specification and then we'll look at options for filling bottles on part two. Uh, if you do have any comments or questions or concerns, you can get in touch with us. You can do so via the comments section below this video on the world of YouTube. So that's below this video. Please make sure you click subscribe and also click the like button. Otherwise, there is social media that you see at the bottom of every slide. Uh, so this is uh, the free part. Part two will only be available on the e-learning portal. That's at winewithjimmy.com. And that is a portal that gives you all of your study techniques, revision sessions, multiple choice questions, all those kind of things, and mainly centered around this exclusive video content to help you through your professional wine courses. So let's start looking at pre-filling analysis and the technical specification, not the largest of sections this one, but nonetheless important. So before packaging, pre-filling analysis will be, of course, carried out to check many things. And here are three main points that will be checked. First of all, the wine stability. Second of all, that we have some um, legal requirements that may need to be conformed to. So this is things such as limits on sulfur dioxide within the wine and other things like trace metals such as iron and copper. And also the technical specification, which I'll go into in greater details on the next slide. So um, it may need to meet a technical specification which has been outlaid by the consumer, the purchaser. Uh, so for example, it may go to a market where there are specific uh, characteristics and technical specifics that will need to be adhered to. Uh, so that's important. It can actually be a part of the winemaker's checklist though as well. So we are really looking at a specification from the winemaker to the purchaser uh, in terms of what they want out of the wine. So three things, there you go. So let's have a look at this technical specification. So this is a list of the wine's main measurable chemical parameters. OK, so we are looking at things that can be measured and, of course, can be listed and supplied at any given point. If the wine is being made for a retailer, for example, uh, so, for example, there are many wines specifically made for multiple grocers or supermarkets, for example, it will actually form part of the purchasing contract that there are, of course, these guidelines that are adhered to by the winemaking team. This will ensure that the wine remains the same or within the limits that are specified by the retailer. Uh, and that's important for consistency year to year. Uh, and the specification will typically include anything that's from this list and you'll see just here. Now we just mentioned on the previous slide that sulfur dioxide can actually be something which is a part of a legal requirement depending on the market it goes to in most markets in the world. So of course free and total SO2 sulfur dioxide can be measured. Volatile acids uh, often are a form of that as well part of the um, the technical specification. Alcohol content, of course, residual sugars, the RS, which is found in the final wine, total acidity, 
the potential of hydrogen, pH, malic acid, lactic acid, total dry extract. That's everything when you take everything out of it, which is talked about what's left behind. Um, stability, turbidity, uh, which is actually how many, um, how much solids are actually remaining in the wine. Uh, minor acids, trace metals, dissolved oxygen, important for some that they know it's going to go to long distance markets, carbon dioxide, uh, microbial populations, and then things like, of course, taints, checks for taints such as cork taint, uh, which is uh, 246 trichlorinanosol, which is the example given there on the list. So I won't, of course, go through all of those in huge detail because they are actually covered in their own rights throughout the uh, throughout this process, throughout the winemaking section of the course. So then we'll look at the results that are given and the analysis, those results will include testing for issues that may have been addressed already such as protein instability, which may give the haziness if not corrected. Uh, so if there are remaining issues, of course, the wine will potentially be treated again. So retreated, of course, to make it fit for its destination market. And within the real last moments before filling, levels of dissolved oxygen, which we have covered in previous presentations, important, of course, for really the longevity of the wine as it goes to market. These will be checked as well as carbon dioxide as well uh, and corrected if necessary. OK, so retreatments. Um, now, we're going to just talk a little bit here about two areas of analysis. So we can do it on site where the wine is made or off-site, where the wines, uh, of course, can uh, samples can be sent to a laboratory and then corrected. So let's talk about the on-site analysis first of all. So this will be done in the winery if that winery has invested in this kind of equipment in a laboratory, for example. And you know, this might be a very, very relaxed laboratory where it's a little side room in the winery, a little hut or whatever it may be, uh, all the way up to a very flashy chemical laboratory. Now, it absolutely depends on, of course, the producer. Larger producers increasingly have installed expensive high tech technology. So these are things like high performance liquid chromatography, HP. LC, which you actually see just here, with results that can be returned, of course, very quickly in a matter of minutes. HPLC is a technique in analysis which is used to separate, separate, identify, and quantify each component uh, in a mixture. Now, it relies on a pump or a number of pumps to pass a pressurized liquid solvent containing the sample mixture through a column filmed, uh, filled with solid uh, adsorbent material. Now, each component in the sample interacts slightly different with the adsorbent material, causing different flow rates for the different components and therefore leading to the separation of those components as they flow out of the column, which can then, of course, be easily uh, identified and quantified. And another analysis is the FTIR, that's the Fourier Transform Infrared Spectroscopy. Uh, and this is a technique used to obtain an infrared spectrum of absorption or emission of a liquid, solid, or gas. And of course, in this instance, of a liquid. Um, so that's if we have the machinery available on site. But of course, many will uh, opt for off-site analysis sent to an external laboratory to be tested. And of course, you will pay a fee for this service. Uh, if the wine is to be transported in bulk, and that means in container, in big volumes, 
Uh, so, for example, in an ISO tank or a flexi tank for long distance travel, the analysis also provides a standard against which the wine can be checked upon arrival to see if there are, of course, any issues in transit which may have occurred in transit. Often you get those exceptionally um, hot containers on ships and in ports, for example. Okay, so that brings me to the end of this first video here on finishing packaging of the packaging operation. So please remember that part two is next on the options available for filling bottles and other containers. This is only going to be available on the wonderful e-learning portal at winewithjimmy.com. Uh, and that's where you can find all the information you'll need to help you and supplement your studies with things like WSET courses. And once again, please do put your comments below this video on YouTube. Click subscribe and click like. And you can get in touch either as well by the social media you see at the bottom of every slide or direct at info at winewithjimmy.com. So I've been Jimmy Smith. Next time, please come and see me in the wonderful city of London if you find yourself here and come and see me for a class, a glass or a bottle. See you soon. Goodbye.